Hi, Mrs. Lemons here to explain some perfect competition graphs to you guys today. So in perfect competition, firms in the long run cannot earn an economic profit. And that's because in perfect competition, there are no barriers to entry. So if any firms do earn an economic profit in the short run, other firms are going to see that and they're going to be enticed or incentivized to enter the market which will ultimately increase supply and lower the price, which will result in driving out any profits that firms were experiencing in the short run. So there may come a time when you need to graphically represent that process, and I'm gonna show you how you do that. What you need to draw is a side-by-side -side graph, okay? Your side-by-side -side graph starts with a normal supply and demand graph for the whole entire market. So over here we've got the graph for the wheat market with um, price and quantity on the axes. We've got upward sloping supply, downward sloping demand, and then our equilibrium price and quantity. So everything's normal there. The side-by-side -side part comes in like this. You're going to draw the firm graph directly to the side of your market graph. So let's say that this is going to be the graph for Joe's wheat farm. He's a wheat farmer in this perfectly competitive wheat market. The whole purpose of the side-by-side -side graph is to demonstrate that Joe's wheat farm and any other perfectly competitive firm is a price taker, meaning that this market price is also the price that Joe will be able to get for his wheat. He won't be able to get any other price because if he charges more, there's so much competition and so many other suppliers that nobody will buy his wheat. And he wouldn't want to charge less because that's not really in his best interest. And since there are no barriers to entry, it's not like he can just drive out all the competition. There's always going to be competition. So Joe is a price taker at the market price. And so the side-by-side -side graph is perfect for showing that because you can draw this dotted line connecting them and that represents that these two prices are the same price. Um, this curve is the demand curve for Joe's Wheat Farm, but it also represents the marginal revenue that Joe gets from um, selling wheat. It also represents the price, the average revenue, and his demand. So a good way to remember this um, that I've heard from their teachers is to call it the Mr. Party Curve. And I really like that tip, so I use it too. Um, so we've got Joe's Mr. Party Curve, which is at the same exact level as the market price. Okay, so then all we have to do is draw his marginal cost and his average total cost curves. Um, so marginal cost looks like a swoosh, um, and that's because initially, marginal cost is going to decrease as Joe's quantity or output or production increases. But right about here, Joe's going to reach a point where he faces diminishing marginal returns due to his fixed inputs, like in this case, his tractors and um, the amount of land he has and things like that. Um, and that's going to force the marginal cost to start increasing the more he produces. For average total cost, that's going to be a U-shaped curve. And since Joe is earning short-run profits, um, maybe because a new type of fertilizer came out or something like that, that allowed wheat farmers to lower their costs because the fertilizer was less expensive. Um, whatever the situation may be, we know that he's earning short-run profits. So we need to draw the average total cost curve dipping below the Mr. Party curve. And the lowest point also needs to be where marginal cost cuts through it. So you're gonna draw it somewhere like that, average total cost. Um, the quantity that Joe will produce is determined by using the profit maximization rule where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Always remember that rule because no matter the market structure, that is where profit will be maximized. So marginal cost and marginal revenue intersect right here so this is Joe's short run quantity. However, 
this is not sustainable in the long run because like I said earlier, other firms will see this profit and the amount of profit that Joe is earning can be found by looking where the quantity intersects with average total cost because that is the total cost at um, the quantity it's producing. And then this rectangle right here that I'm shading in is the region um, that represents the amount of profit that Joe is earning. And the fact that he's earning any profit at all is going to entice people who are maybe growing other types of crops or people with land or whatever, people who um, might want to get into the wheat farming business and also earn an economic profit. So that'll happen. They'll enter the market. And when more firms start entering the market, what do we know happens? Supply in the market increases because now we have more firms supplying wheat so the overall market supply will increase and when the market supply increases like so what happens to the price it goes down the market price is going to be driven down and the overall market quantity will be driven um, to be higher so this is going to be good for consumers because now there's going to be more supply at a lower price um, but for the wheat farmers, it puts them in a situation where their profits are erased or wiped out, basically, um, because they're still price takers. Nothing has changed with that, and nothing has changed with their cost curves either. The only thing that's changed is that more firms have entered the industry, which increased the market supply and decreased the market price. So now we've got our second price curve right here. Mr. Party. It's really important that you label it Mr. Party because then you're covering all your bases no matter what the question's asking basically. Um, so now we can see that the increased supply has driven the price to be tangent to average total cost meaning that Joe is earning a normal profit or zero economic profit. The marginal cost and marginal revenue now intersect here. So basically, from Joe's perspective, he's going to produce less because he's getting a lower price, and due to his costs um, and his marginal revenue, that's going to drive him to produce less. But overall, there's more firms in the market, so that's why the overall market quantity has increased. Um, and now Joe is no longer earning a profit because there's no gap between average total cost and price where Joe is now producing. Um, so the way I drew it, it worked out perfectly, but basically in real life, the supply will continue to increase until you get to this point where firms are no longer earning any economic profit. Um, because once you get to that point, there's not going to be any more incentive for new firms to enter the industry. So the supply will stop increasing at that point. Thanks for joining me today.